from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let every nation rejoice. Praise the Lord with one mighty voice. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. To Central and South America. Join us. Columbus, Ohio, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings to encourage and inspire. And now, here's today's host. Hello and welcome to Praise the Lord, coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. I'm Bill Griffin and this is my wife Sandy from the Christian Counseling Center, your host for today. We're going to be seeing a program that's filled with the Word of God and anointed guests and precious music. We thank you for joining us here today. We're much indebted to Dr. Paul and Jan Crouch, the founders of TBN, for making this all possible and bringing this magnificent network right into the center of Columbus, Ohio, and all of Central Ohio. Sandy, do you have a word of God from us, uh, something from Scripture that would bless us? I do. You know, I was thinking about today's program. Mary Magdala, there were three different times that she profoundly touched the heart of God. The first time was when she was demonized. Mm -hmm. and and his heart of compassion just went out to her, to this Mary the lost woman, this Mary the town woman that everybody knew and had a, a reputation, this Mary who was an addict, this Mary who needed the touch of God on her life. Her need profoundly touched him. The next time that, that we know that Mary's heart touched the heart of God was when she came into the home of Simon the healed leper oh, who was God. hosting Jesus and his disciples. Mm -hmm. And there she was, she poured out her life savings, she poured out her dignity, mm -hmm. she poured out everything she had in love and admiration for God. And Jesus said, it so touched him, he said every time the gospel was going to be preached that what she did would be told. And the next time that she profoundly touched his heart was after the resurrection. She was the first one that he came to because her heart was broken. And there's going to be many today that the Lord is going to touch our hearts. Why don't we just pray yes. together would and open pray? this program? I would love to. Father, thank you for this opportunity. What a blessed opportunity we have, Lord, to know you and and Lord, to receive of your healing power. I pray that you would touch the hearts of each one that you're drawing, even in the night season, whenever they see this program. It's you who drew them because there's a need. And Lord, we ask for those who don't know you to come to not only saving knowledge of you, but to deep relationship with you. And Lord, we welcome your presence. We invite your presence. Because in your presence, there's fullness of joy. Lord, reveal yourself to us. Manifest yourself to okay. us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have a very special guest joining us today. Pastor Debbie Miller joins us in Columbus, Ohio today. And Sandy will share some information about who she is and, and the Lord's leading. Pastor Debbie Miller, married to Steve and yes. is mother of three children here and three children in heaven. Yes. 
She's the author of Through a Mother's Eyes, and Debbie's going to share a very touching, powerful, painful experience that many of us have walked through, and that's miscarriage and stillbirth, and the questions that come from that, and the, the break in the relationship with God that sometimes comes. So right now, if you know somebody that this is going to touch, please call them. Debbie, I've, uh, as we were praying for the program, this scripture came to my heart, and I'd just like to open our segment up with it. 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 to 5. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, mm -hmm. and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we could comfort those in any trouble mm -hmm. with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. Amen. Amen. Debbie, by way of helping our viewing audience get to know you a little bit better, could you share with us how you came to know the Lord as a little girl? You recounted some tent meetings that you'd gone to, wonderful early childhood experiences with the Lord. Could you share with us a little bit about that? Absolutely. First of all, I want to just say thank you for having me on here today. Oh, we welcome I am you. so blessed. And one of the things is when I was a little girl, my mom took me to those revival tent meetings where those holy rollers were <laughs> back in the 60s and 70s. So I would sit there as a child, and I would watch them do the worship, and I would watch the pastor as, or the evangelist walk across the platform, which a lot of times was a hay wagon. Mm -hmm. And I'd watch him talk. And he seemed so much to love the Lord. He just did. And then they would do an altar call at the end of the service. And one day I felt the tug. And even though I was only little, probably about 10 years old, mm -hmm. I walked that long walk up there to that hay wagon. Mm -hmm. And I got down on my knees. And I asked Jesus to come into my heart. God. And even though I was a child, I really thought he did. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd be changed forever. Mm -hmm. And Debbie Hay Wagons, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up a lot of places. We lived a lot of different places, but sometimes there was an evangelist that came into town, and he set up in a field, okay. popped his tent, put a hay wagon, bales of hay became the alder. Awesome. And so you just went to the alder. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter where you were. It doesn't matter yeah, because... Sweet simplicity. Yes. And where the oh, altar sure. is, heaven and earth meet and God comes. If he comes to bales of hay, yeah. he'll come anywhere. He will come. That's true. He will come yeah. to a hospital yes. room. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tell us your story. Well, for me, being saved as a little girl, yes. I used to think once saved, always saved. But it's not the way it is. I was saved, but like all things, the world temptations enter in. Mm. You get tempted by friends. You get tempted by alcohol. Mm -hmm. You get tempted by pornography. There's so many temptations out there. And when you're young and you're trying to deal with the world, sometimes the world wins. Just worldly success can be a draw to people to pull them away from their yes. faith base. Yeah. Yes. So I was pulled away from my faith base. Mm -hmm. And I became a bartender. Oh. Okay. It's not something that a person who once would know God would think you could right. become, but I did. Mm -hmm. I met my husband, who is awesome. I have the best husband in the world, <laughs> and we were very blessed. We had a uh, daughter. In between my two daughters, I lost mis or I had a miscarriage of twins. Of twins. Mm -hmm. I lost two babies, mm -hmm. and I don't know who came up with the word miscarriage, because mm -hmm. I didn't miss anything. No. To me, it was a baby. Mm. It was a part of me. When a woman finds out she's pregnant, she's so excited. Oh, gosh, yeah. And to lose a part of me, mm. my baby, I didn't know if it was a boy or girl. Mm. I didn't know what they did with it. Did they throw the baby away? What happened to my child? Mm. You mourn for your baby. You do. It's a crisis of faith. It, it, it is, and you think nobody understands. And because... Because the pain is so individual. Yes, yes. It's very personal. It is very personal. And people tell you things like, well, it's better off that way. Something could have been wrong with the baby, or you can right. try again. Right. It and doesn't change the fact what happened. That yeah. there's loss and yes. loss of life. And you have nothing to hold. You have nothing to look at. There's nothing there concrete. Debbie, and, and when I walk 
that walk, mm -hmm. when I experienced it, my first question was, Lord, why would you start something that you didn't complete? Mm. Why? And it, it stirs lots of questions. But, but go on and tell us. One of the story. things I found out is how many women have had yes. a miscarriage. Oh, yes. And they're still grieving their child. First thing, some women blame themselves. Maybe they should have done something better. Maybe they should have done something. For me, I got over the miscarriage. I got pregnant again. And I had a little girl. And when my little girl, Jennifer, was about six weeks old, I got pregnant again. Wow. Mm. And I knew. I just knew it was a boy. <clears throat> I don't know how. I just knew it. I was so excited. It was my first son. Mm -hmm. And to give my husband a son, it's what I wanted to do. Well, about five months, I had some amniotic fluid leak out, and I almost lost him. So I became a high risk, and they started watching me very closely mm -hmm. every two weeks. Well, in between one visit and another visit, all of a sudden, Michael stopped moving. And yes, we gave him a name. Named we named him, him Michael. Yes. Gift of God. Yes. Oh, he was my gift. So you had ultrasounds and all of the Yes, and then we got to see him, and he was, oh, he looked beautiful. Yeah. He was moving around so much. Mm -hmm. It was near his due date. We were about two weeks away from his due date, and all of a sudden he wasn't moving around as much. So we thought, well, he's going into the birth canal. It's getting time. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. settling down. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I called the doctor, and the doctor says, well, you better come in just for a checkup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went in. A lady came and did an ultrasound on me. In the middle of the ultrasound, while we were right in the middle of talking, she looked at me and ran out of the room crying. Oh, my goodness. So I laid there on that cold bed. I leaned up and I looked at the ultrasound. I saw the picture of my little boy, and mm -hmm. he wasn't moving. Mm -hmm. So I touched my belly and tried to get him to move, and he wouldn't move. So I started pushing on my belly harder mm -hmm. to get him to wake up, right. get him to move. He didn't move. Mm -hmm. Two doctors came into the room, looked at the ultrasound, told me to get dressed. They had me walk down a long hall. Two doctors were in the room waiting for me. They shut the door behind me. They offered me a drink and to sit down. And I sat down, which made no sense. I was just there for a checkup to see what yourself? was wrong. Deb, you I was yourself? all alone. So I go in the room, and the doctor looked at me, and he said, I am so sorry. And I said, what are you sorry for? And he said, your baby's dead. Ooh. That echoed in my head so much. There are no words to describe. They said the lady who had brought me in had left me, that she couldn't face me because the baby was dead. They said they had called my husband, but he was two hours away. Wow. So they said I'd have to go sit in the waiting room with all the pregnant women and wait for my husband to come. Mm. They told me they wanted to put me in the hospital right away. They would induce my labor. But the labor and delivery room was full. So they told me I had to come ho go home and come back the next day at 6 a.m. in the hospital oh, to, give birth. to give birth to my little boy. <clears throat> so insensitive. And so many people have lived through the same thing. Yes, maybe. yes. And one of the hardest things is when I went home that night, I was still pregnant. You yes, still saw a course. pregnant belly. Mm -hmm. So I went and I walked in the nursery that night and I touched the bassinet knowing it's going to stay empty. Mm -hmm. I touched the crib. I looked in the mirror. And I kept hoping yeah. they were wrong. Mm -hmm. They were going to find out when I delivered my son. They were wrong. Mm -hmm. They were all wrong. But the next day, when I went to the hospital, What's meant to be such a happy time right. yes. wasn't. Mm -hmm. They told me they were going to make it as fast as they could. They were going to induce me. We're going to make this very fast for you. It was 12 hours of labor. Of labor. My goodness. Yes. Mm -hmm. When Michael was born, you didn't hear a cry. There was no sound in the room. The only sound there was was doctors and nurses sniffling. Mm. They had asked me before he was born, do you want to hold your baby? Do you want to see your baby? I thought that was the cruelest thing anyone could ever ask someone. Yet, when he was born, 
I wanted to see him. Of course you did. Definitely. Oh, my goodness. So I had them wheel him over. He was on the baby cart, wrapped in a receiving blanket, just like a real baby. Mm -hmm. They had one of those funny hats on him. Yeah. How do you say hello to your son? And then in your next breath, say goodbye. Say goodbye. Mm. I looked at him and I told him how much I loved him. I told him that he was going to go eat with Jesus now. Okay. Mm. But it was okay. It was. And I said all kinds of things to him that day. But at that moment, something else happened to me. This hatred and anger starts setting into my heart. Mm. See, I had to blame someone for what had happened to me. Because there's no way to understand. Right. How could life yeah, nobody could suddenly end? This is my baby. And it's not Babies to don't happen. die. Right. Exactly. Babies do not die. Yeah. So when this anger set in, the only one that seemed to blame was God. Yeah. So I started hating him. He was a baby killer. Mm. He took my baby, my innocent child, didn't do anything. Mm. He didn't do a thing. Mm. He just wanted to be born. That's all he wanted. And in a blink of an eye, he was taken from me. Oh my goodness. So you lost Michael yes. and the comfort of God at the same time? Yes. Really? Yes. You were what just a totally tragic. bereft of any help, any consolation. It was me. Yeah. There was me. And it was me against the world. And oh what about goodness. Steve? How did he do with it? When Michael was born, Steve looked at me, and he said, I see the Lord holding Michael. Mm. And he collapsed on my chest. Mm. That was my husband. Mm. He was crying, weeping after our son. How could God do this to us? We weren't that bad of people. Yeah. We may not have been going to church. We may not have been living a good Christian life. But we weren't bad people. No. Why were we being punished? Mm -mm. And it feels like punishment. It was definitely punishment. Wow. So, Debbie, how did you come to the place of making peace with that? At first, there was no peace. I had to go through the graveside service. I had to bury my child. Mm -hmm. I had to meet with the funeral director. And we had to pick out a casket. You never expect to bury your child, ever. The anger and the hatred just set in stronger and stronger. And it wasn't till at my lowest point of my life when they want to amputate my legs and that I'm dying that a group of elders from a church, that an elder felt they needed to come pray over me that very, very night. And this... Um, the Bible does tell us in James, call for the elders, elders if you're sick. Church. We understand that that your story has been made into a movie. Yes. And we're going to have the opportunity to share with our viewing audience a trailer that comes from this mm -hmm. movie. So we'd like to show you this and see what we're talking about. But for the grace of God, how could you have made it? By God. By God. By God. By God. By God. There but are people right now who are so moved by this story because mm -hmm. they've experienced they this is their story it. also. Could we pray for those out there? Yeah. Touch their lives and bring a healing touch to them. Yes. Bring them a word of hope, would you? One of the things, I stood outside the nursery where all the babies were, and I put my hands on that glass, and I said, God, I want something good to come from the loss yes. of my son, Michael. I want there to be a legacy. Mm. What good can <clears throat> come from death but life? I know what life is with no hope. I know what it's like to deal with anxiety and depression and overwhelming sadness. But I am living proof of hope. I am living proof of what God can do. He loves you when you don't even love yourself. He believes in you when you cannot believe in yourself. He is all that we have. And all we ever have to do is call on his name. Just call on his name. Debbie, speak to that woman right now that's brokenhearted, that's in that place of 
anger toward God and so lost in her pain in that darkness. I know pain. I lived it. I walked in it. It was my journey. From the time I woke up till the time I went to bed. I know what hate is. I'm here to tell you that no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you have been through, he loves you. God loves you. He loves you. Friends will come against you. Friends will turn on you. But he never will. He, never leaves you he will believe in you and walk you every step of the way. I'm here to tell you there's hope for your tomorrows. Amen. And there's still hope for your today. Even when I hated God and I called him every name I could think about, he loved me. He believed in me. I'm here today to tell you hope is real. God is real. And his mercy endures forever and ever. And know this, that our loved ones who have left us are in eternal life with God the Father, and the Son. Amen. And, and as, they'll join us. And as David said, he can't come to us, but we will go to him. Amen. And we will be reunited. Yes. And those children are alive and being raised in heaven by the Lord. Yes. The greatest thing is when my life is done. Yes. And I get to heaven's gate, my babies are going to welcome me in. So I do the work I do, and I make the noise I make because I will get into heaven. And I want to encourage you, I'm no one special, just a mom and a housewife that loves the Lord. But if God can do this for me, he can do this for you. Amen. Debbie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And once again, the book that Debbie has written, Through a Mother's Eyes, mm. we commend it to you. It's hard, but it's holy. Thank you so much for sharing your story and praying with our listening audience. It's all about hope. It is it about, is about hope. hope. And not about asking for an explanation because there's nothing that's going to satisfy our no. hearts. Nothing's going to answer no. that loss except God's presence to heal. No. That's the only way we can face our tomorrows. Amen. Right. The only way. Amen. And God does place a piece of peace that passes understanding mm -hmm. within us when we come to know the Lord that sustains us in these moments of pain and agony. I'm no longer in pain that I lost my child. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed. I'm among the family of those who of our children have gone on ahead. We are blessed beyond words. That's true. They're just like they're in Chicago. Mm -hmm. They're there forever. Yes. And they will meet us when we get there. Amen. Amen. Because they have eternal life. Yes. And it's us. We need eternal life mm -hmm. just as much as they do. Amen. Once again, we're so grateful to Paul and Jan Crouch for bringing TBN to the region to be able to share a story of such pathos, such, such power, and, and glorifying God at the same time to, to bring hope to a, a people that are seeing this and hearing this who've experienced it in their own lives. We thank you so much for sharing You're this welcome. with us. Thank you. No one talks about this subject. They don't. Because, because it hurts too it's much. so painful. So I will be the voice for the ones who can't speak right now. Crying and you do have wilderness. an outreach ministry that yes. focuses on this. And yes. Yes. Have meetings all over. Praise God. And we just want to thank you. I, mm. This book, I know for you to write it must have been so painful, but also so healing. I've cried at writing the book. I sat through the movie behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had to relive when they gave birth in the movie to the baby knowing that was my son. My goodness. And yeah. I have shed tears, but I do not cry because of pain now. I cry for those that are out there watching this. I want you to know there's hope. Amen. And God loves you. God so loves you. And you so need him. It is the only way you can make it through this. Amen. There is no other way. That's very true.
Thank you, Debbie. Thank you for sharing with us and our, and our viewers. Thank you for having me here. Thanks, God.